Alright, so I'm gonna give you guys a hint about our next topic. Okay, go. A CD, a beach ball, an orange, a basketball. Oh, is it jean shorts? How'd you get jean shorts from a CD, a beach ball, an orange, and a basketball? Well, they're all things I keep in my jean shorts. No, they're all round things. Do you get it? Rounding? Oh, I get it. It's a horrible joke, but I get it. Well, I may joke around now. Rounding is no joke at all. It's something that's used in math all the way up through college. So I guess I should pay attention, huh? Yes, totally. Now, the first thing you need to know in rounding is place value. Some kids may know it already, but mm, let's just review it really quick. This is a place value chart. It tells the value of each number. So let's say if you write the number 128. The 8 is in the 1's place. The 2 is in the 10's place. And the 1 is in the 100's place. You're going to need to know place value if you're going to round. What does place value have to do with rounding? Well, it's all in the directions of the problems you're reading. Here, look at this. Take a look at the problem here. The number is 62. Now take a second to read the directions above it. They say, round to the nearest tens place. So Andy, using what you learned before, what number is in the tens place? The six? Correct. We're making progress now, but the first step is to underline the number you're working with. Here, go ahead, say it. Underwear the number you're working with. Not even close, try it again. Underline the number you're working with. Correct. So if it says round to the nearest tens place and you're supposed to underline the number you're working with, well, what number should we underline? The six. Correct. Okay, so what's next? Well, the next thing I say is to circle the number next to it. Here, say it with me. Circle the number next to it. So we circle the number next to it, and this number affects this number tremendously. Now you ask yourself a question. Is the number you circled closer to 10 or 0? Well, it's definitely closer to 0. Yep, so we turn it into a 0, and we're done. All right, so what's the answer? Is it 60? Ding, ding, let's continue. Well, well, but what if the number you circled is closer to 10? Hmm, let's try it. So let's repeat the steps. This time, the number 67. The directions say, round to the nearest tens place. So, what do we do? Well, underline the number you're working with. Circle the number next to it. This number affects this number tremendously. Now you ask yourself a question. Is the number you circled closer to 10 or 0? If it's closer to 0, you turn it into a 0 and you're done. But the number we circled is 7. Is that closer to 10 or 0? It's closer to 10. Correct. So we turn the number we circled into a 0 and the other number goes up by 1. So what's one number higher than six? Is it seven? Bingo, and you're done. All right, so let's repeat the steps. Step brothers, step up to the streets, step by step, the Stepford wives. No, try again. Underline the number you're working with. Circle the number next to it. The number you circled affects the other number tremendously. tremendously. Now you ask yourself a question. Is the number you circled closer to 10 or 0? If it's closer to 0, you turn it into a 0 and you're done. But if it's closer to 10, you turn it into a 0, but the number you underlined goes up by 1. Yeah, it's that simple. But what if it's a bigger number, like 237? Well, you still follow the same steps, but there's one extra rule. Here, look at this. So once again, we look at the directions. This time, it says to round to the nearest 100. So, what number is in the hundreds place? The two? Yep. So the next step is to... Underline the number you're working with. Then we... Uh, circle the number next to it. This number affects this number... Tremendously. Now we ask ourselves a question. Is the number you circle closer to ten or zero? Well, it's closer to zero. So we turn it into a zero and the two stays the same. But we're still left with that seven. So we take that number and we turn him into a zero. But why? But why what? But why do we turn the seven into a zero? 
because he's so lonely. What? He sit there all alone at night and he eat a TV dinner all alone at night because he's so lonely. I think he's losing it. He go to the movies all alone and he sit all alone and get one seat and one popcorn because he's so yogi. So anything to the right of the number you circled turns into a zero. Yeah, pretty much, but do you know why? Oh, here we go. Because he's so lonely! Okay, one more problem. Let's try 368. All right, here we go. So we read the directions, and they say round to the nearest hundred. So we underline the number in the hundreds place, circle the number next to it, the number we circled affects the other number tremendously. Now we ask ourselves a question. Is the 6 closer to 10 or 0? Well, it's closer to 10. So we turn the 6 into a 0, and the other number goes up by 1 and becomes a 4. But what about the 8? It turns into a 0 because... It's so yay! You had to do it, didn't you? When he get worried and bust with the two sis, he said on a yawn with no one else to him because he's a yoi. Kids, it's not too late to change the channel. Do it. Do it. They go to the subreddit alone at night with no one else. <laughs> For plane tickets. <laughs> no reason why. No reason why I bought the plane ticket. You got one seat and one popcorn. <laughs> <laughs>